In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to stop the tight flex offense in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Now if you're new to the channel and you don't know what the channel is about, my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player in Madden 21. And one of the ways that we help you become better at this game is we post daily videos on YouTube that are designed to share with you what I'm learning about the game as I am learning it. And so i uh, excited to really dive in today to the gun tight flex defense. Um, I think that gun tight flex or tight offset tight end or tight double on any way you spin it, there are a couple of key things that you want to look for as far as how you're going to stop this. And this is an excerpt out of our 335 wide defensive ebook. So I actually have a full ebook that literally shows you how to stop everything in Madden 21. Um, and that is available for you in the description. If you're looking to get better on the defensive side of the ball, in my opinion, the best place to start is with the nickel 335 wide uh, defensive ebook, which is available for you in the description. If you have any questions about the video as we go through this, go ahead and just text me my personal cell phone number is in the top left hand corner of your screen okay guys so the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I have my flats on 30 my curl flats on 10 and my hook zones on five that's kind of the starting point and then we're gonna kind of work from there uh, as we work through this defense now um, my favorite base defense in the game right now uh, is indeed the 335 wide um, and, and specifically the 335 wide cover four that's my favorite way to start and um, you know obviously if I need to adjust into a different coverage shell, the beauty of the cover four is you kind of can adjust to really any coverage shell that you want um, because you kind of start in quarters, but you can obviously work out of that. Now, uh, one of the other things that I do want to hit really quickly that I haven't hit in a couple of videos is the importance of coming out in 335 normal. And we're in the 46 playbook here. And the reason it's so important to come out in 335 normal is because it gives you better personnel. You're able to get safeties down at the linebacker, safety at the line of scrimmage which is going to help a lot um, when we go into some man coverage concepts as well but anyways I want to start with tight flex and I want to start with probably the best play from this formation uh, which is the PA post shot and the, the several crossing routes that this offers um, the defense so first and foremost uh, we're just gonna play kind of standard cover four um, and when I say standard cover four, I mean cover four with the quarter flats and cover four with the vertical hooks. As you see here, I like to put vertical hooks out there. And then my user is just going to be in a spy um, just so we can kind of watch what happens on this play. So really, I mean, you don't even have to do any. Honestly, I don't even think you have to really make an adjustment at all. Um, you might put the running back on an option route, but really that's about it. Um, and that, I mean, you, th this play kind of stock is really, really good. I would probably smart out Devontae Adams. Um, but anyways, let's just watch how this play works and we'll look at it in instant replay. So we go, we go, we go. And what we see is that crossing route gets open. So now what I want to do is I want to dive into instant replay, kind of talk a little bit about tight doubles or tight flex. Um, and it's really all very, it's very similar, even though it's, you know, this is, this is particularly from the Rams playbook. Um, but what you'll notice here is this is very similar. So you see here, I have my vert hooks out here, um, taking away the underneath drag. So the drag is, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of taken away. I mean, it's not completely taken away, but it's kind of taken away. So then the next thing, we work to the option route. Option route's covered, okay, because we have the yellow route, okay? The next thing that we want to look at is this crosser. So this crosser, as you can see, is wide open, okay? Nobody's guarding him, okay? So we need to deal with that crossing route, okay? And then the next thing we want to look is how does this left side one work? Now, if you notice, this actually did a decent job. Um, when you run quarters to the wide side of the field against a crossing route, it normally does a decent job. As you can see right here, it pretty much takes it like we want it to, okay? Quarters to the wide side of the field actually does a relatively decent job. Quarters to the short side of the field doesn't always do the best. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna move the ball to the right hash mark, and now what you're gonna see is and we're gonna run that we're gonna literally do the exact same adjustments but what you'll notice is the defense will play differently based off of where the hash mark is uh, for this so this is cover four this is cover four with zone drops also um, so just so that you know that but again um, we're just gonna run the play here and I just want you to show you to show you this crossing route now on the right side I mean I guess they did a decent job of covering it so you know, maybe maybe cover four is the way to go on this. Um, let me walk, let me take a look here at the up opposite side. If you look at Valdez Scantling here, you're going to see that he's still it's pretty open, and uh, that's an easy read. So realistically, um, I want to talk through a couple of other combinations that this 
offense can bring onto the field. It's the first one um, is the play cross, okay? The play cross. And this is one of the oldest and probably one of the most popular plays in Madden history. Uh, and the reason why is it's been around forever, but this is such a good passing concept. Um, basically, you know, used to be that wheel routes were super glitchy against man coverage. Now wheel routes aren't super effective against man, at least the way I know them to run. But the two crossers that are in the middle will do a good job against man. You got two wheel routes. And then you have this nice little over route to post route. Now, if you take a look here, you're going to notice that you can't really throw that against that cover four defense. So we've, we don't, we, we're not going to get killed by this play. So let's move to the, another play uh, from this offense, and that would be the slot curl. Um, this is just a simple flood uh, to the left side. We can just even sit and stop cover four from three through five wide to know that that corner route is really, really good. So we got to deal with that. That left side outside outside area is really a problem. Um, the other thing is, like as you can see here, though, the one thing about this defense or this this uh, scheme that I actually really think is very important is there's nothing on the left side that can really really kill me in terms of if I don't have a if I don't have a particular zone over there. Obviously, if they have hot route master, it might be able to like this play inside high low very similar so you'll see here I can just simply sit in this and look at this right here that post route's not open now I know they can do different you know combinations but this is kind of the basic you know starting point so realistically and if we jump back into the play call menu here I just want to point out a couple things about the routes um, that your opponent might have now first and foremost I want to run through this real quick this is tight doubles a lot of people if they're smart and they know what they're doing they will audible to this formation um, if they're running you know if they're running this kind of offense they will audible down to this because it basically looks the same as, as tight doubles and there's a couple decent plays in here but if you take a look at this there's only really uh, I guess tight slots week might be a, a might be a uh, might be a, an exception to this rule but there's really not a lot of things like if you look through these plays here there's only one play really i mean i guess there's two plays technically bench switch um that really does anything to the right side and so what we want to dive into and before we start doing our zone drops and everything we want to understand kind of what the formation can bring to the table that's one of the most important things i think when you're developing a defense is you know what can what can the formation bring to the table like what what can they do so like right here um what you're going to notice here is we're going to go down that cover four show too and if you watch we're going to move the ball this way but now what you should see is this cor we're going to dive into some of these corner routes on the left side so um if you take a look here Again, this is just standard cover four, and I just want you to watch the corner routes on the right side from this play bench switch. You see that it has that special corner route to cir the, the circle receiver. That's actually a big deal. Um, that's a big, big deal because that corner route normally will beat every zone uh, drop in the entire game um, as far as how it's going to work. So, for example, let's say that I called bench switch. I streaked the tight end. I put the running back on a little uh, swing route to the right. You know, this combination right here, you're going to see that this circle receiver should get open relatively easily against his own coverage. As you can see right there, it does. So that 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 is huge. That's huge for the offensive scheme because now I can't just sit in, you know, whatever I want to sit in. Now, really quick, I just want to come over here to tight doubles uh, just briefly, and I want to show you something out of tight doubles here. So if you take a look at tight doubles, you see that mesh spot, you have that corner around on the left with the curl play you have a nice little kind of sharp cutting route uh with flood you see you have a corner out there pa wide receiver cross you see that that crossing route's not very deep um you know so that's kind of what you've got so all that to say here is kind of what we've taken away we've got to stop a corner route on the left side we've got to stop a corner route on the right side and it's kind of it's honestly kind of the, the beauty of this offense i mean they can do both they can hit they can attack both sidelines relatively easily now one thing i do want to hit on really quickly before we dive too deep into the setup 
is I want to show you one last thing, and that is if you run these corner routes to the to the short side of the field, okay? So if I run a corner route right here to the short side of the field, you're going to notice it plays a little bit differently than if you run it to the wide side. You see here to the short side, the outside quarter will go with it. As you can see right there, the outside quarter will go with that quarter, um, with that with that route to that side of the field. Now, if you're on the wide side of the field, it's completely different. So if I run that corner out to the wide side of the field here, you're going to see the defense has to play completely different. So if I go into cover four, show two here, um, and this is actually probably in the offense's advantage, honestly. But what you'll see here is if you watch the circle receiver, the corner, even though he has deep out elite or deep out KO, he does not get him. Okay, most of the time. So we got to deal with this stuff. So how do we deal with it? Okay, so here's your setup. Remember, we got to deal with two routes on the right. We've got to deal with a crossing route and a corner route on the left. On the left side, same kind of thing: a crossing route and a corner route. Those are the two main routes that we got to deal with. The best way to stop those is to put your outside corners in cloud flats. As you can see right here, we're going to put them both in cloud flats. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put both of our linebackers into seam flats. So the way that you do that is you're going to hit Y Y and then the square for the corner on the left, and you're going to hit him down on the left joystick on the right side. YY or triangle triangle you're gonna hit the circle button or the B button and then put down on the left stick for a cloud flat to put a linebacker in a seam flat you're going to hit um, right on the left d-pad twice and then click the icon of the player we want the square and the X linebackers and then we're hitting up on the left joystick to put them into seam flats okay just like that right there and then from that point I like to take the slot corner and I actually like to um, put some man coverage on the field here, um, but, and, and the reason why I like man coverage, and we'll talk about it in just a second, um, I want to show you what happens if we don't. So we're just going to put him in a yellow zone here, just for the sake of an example for you guys, um, and then we're going to put our defensive end on the left, on the right side here into a vertical hook or a three wreck, whatever you guys want to do, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can do either one, at least right now, okay? So now I want to show you the play uh, PA post shot. And what I want you to do is I want you to watch the uh, crossing routes here on the right. So if you take a look at this route, the triangle, um, what you're going to see is it gets over that zone. As you can see right there, it does get over the zone. So that's an issue, right? You can't just sit in stock zone coverage and it work. Unfortunately, the problem is we have to have that over there because we have to be able to stop the corner route that they can run. So for example, let's say that I, um, let's say that I put this, this, this same coverage out there, okay? Put the linebackers in seam flats, do everything exactly the same. But now what I want you to watch is I want you to watch the play bench switch. And this is kind of the dilemma that I think tight offset or tight flex does give you. Um, you'll see here that this corner route, because we're on the wide side of the field, he can get over it because it's from compression uh, compression uh, set. So this gives us a real issue um, as far as how we're going to defend this. And again, um, what I would do, honestly, against this, I would base a line. And the reason why I would base a line is because the routes are not... They can't kill you over the middle with this offense. They can kill you on the sidelines. Even though they're compressed, they really can't kill you. So, for example, let's see the same combination uh, on that left side with the bench switch. And I want you just to watch this corner play. Now, when he's outside leverage, you see they can't get over the top of him. Right? Outside leverage, they can't get over the top of him. You, about, you got it. When he's pressed, that's where your issue's coming in. So if I press him, it's the same zone drop here. When I press him right over the receiver, it is the same issue. Um, and this is this is this right here. I think is where the biggest challenge uh, defending this formation comes. Is do you base a line or not? Because if you don't base a line, you see here he can run over it, right? That's a thirty-yard cloud flat, and he ran right over it every time. So that to me is really the challenge of this defense um, or this offense. So what I would do is I would just base align it and uh, unless you really, really want to play man coverage and I don't see there being a big, big need to do that, I would do it like that. And then all I would do is I would take this uh, slot corner and I would man him up onto the the, the guy that's going to go on the crossing route uh, triangle right there, man him up on that guy. And then you're just usering over the middle with your user. You've got a three wreck in the field. Now again, could you get killed with curls? Yeah, you could. But you have a starting point. And again, if you take a look at this, this combination here now, 
Now that man coverage is going to kind of trail him. On the cut, he's going to catch up to him. And as you can see right there, you've got people in the vicinity, and you're going to be able to stop that route. So what I would do if I was playing tight offset, because of the where the the where of the routes are going, I would actually base a line. And I know that's probably not a very popular decision, but I actually think that's the right move um, from this is to base align this uh, it, because it just gives you better alignment for it. Um, but we'll show you one other thing here. So if you try to do traditional Maybelline, um, where you did something like this right here, maybe um, the issue you're going to run into is you, it's like you can't Mabel enough players. And the problem is the outside quarters aren't going to get anywhere. And it, the, the real issue is the alignment of tight offset, in my opinion. So if you take a look here, we're going to run that same route combination. And I'm still going to be able to hit this all day long to Valdez Scantling. Pretty much at will, I'm going to be able to hit that route. So um, the reason I, I suggest base aligning is because it definitely does help a lot um, in terms of how everything goes. They're not going to be able to seam streak you. You know, they're not going to be able to do that because you've got safeties in the middle of the field. That, that's not going to be an option for them. You know, it, it, and now if you're running, if you're running, even if you're running man coverage, um, what I would do if I was running man coverage, I would literally take these safeties right here and I would just kind of pinch them in. So it feeds it. Like, you see what I'm saying? So it looks kind of like that covered. And then what's going to happen, man coverage doesn't do too bad against this play. You'll see here. I mean, that triangle route, unless he has like 90 route running, he's not going to, I mean, he, you know, he's not going to kill it. So man coverage isn't too too bad either um, against tight uh, tight offset. It's just with the best route runners in the game now, you know that's where it's becoming a little bit of a challenge. But anyways, um, you know, and obviously the corner out on the left. So let me talk about the corner out right on the left real quick um, through a base alignment perspective. So again, your setup is you know relatively simple here. And you see, I have I have a yellow on I have a yellow zone there. Um, now, if you don't want to have that yellow zone, you can just man him up onto triangle. And now, what you're going to notice is, let's say that I try to go to a corner route, um, and to, to show you this, we'll show you it out of mesh spot. So now, if I go to that corner route on the left, well, look, I've already got a player out there. There's no way to him to get that right unless he just aggressive catches it. There's no opening. So. Um, if I was me, at least right now, I actually think base aligning and doing zone drops um, from from a perspective of defending tight is really effective. Now, the one thing is um, you don't get the ability to just like play, mix in a press man pressure or different things like that. But I think it. I think it over. I mean, you really give tight offset a tough time when you base align this is just my perspective um, because a lot of the big play routes the chunk play routes are going to be taken away you're going to force them to have to dink and dunk and then from there you can even mix in some pressure blitzes out of it because they're not used to you know the slot streaks aren't going to kill you this year the slot streaks are not um you know they're not as good as they've been in years past so if you just do this um you know, you, you're going to have some success. The beauty of this is you could actually still send pressure. So if I base a line press and do all that, I could blitz all my linebackers straight down. Okay. And then what I would do um, is, is I would go ahead and just put both corners into cloud flats. And then I would actually roll a coverage into the middle of the field. So I would put the, the right side guy into a curl, curl flat, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, not a curl flat, but a hook curl. Um, and then I would put the safety into an inside third and this is really risky but you know they're not used to having stuff and those cloud flats are 30 yard cloud flats and what you'll see is they send everybody out on a route okay so let's say they send everybody out on a route they're trying to hit you underneath and you're running right down there you know right down their throat with heavy 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 pressure you know the thing about tight offset is it's going to take a while for the routes to get open because they have to run to where they're going they're not going to be open instantly they're going to have to run so you can also i think have a fair amount of success in blitzing the crap out of this offense. That's another thing that you could do um, as you're kind of building your scheme. You know, even if they run this PA post shot, you could get up on him and really, you know, really threaten him a little bit. So that's a little bit uh, about tight offset, tight end. This is one of the harder offenses, I think, to stop 
consistently right now in the game. So, you know, we spent a little bit more time on this video. But again, if you want to get the full defensive ebook, it goes into detail on not just how to run run cup run one specific play, but it shows you how to really run an entire defense together as a system and be able to systematically shut down your opponent. Shows you how to stop pretty much every popular uh, formation in the entire game. So have, that's been a lot, very successful for a lot of people. And again, it's just 15 bucks to pick it up. Now, if you want to get a sample preview of the ebook, that is available for my text message members. And my text message membership is completely free to you. All you have to do to get that sample is just send me a message. My phone number is 812-216-3644. So just pull out your cell phone and just say, hey, Cody, I'd like to get that 335 wide sample video. And I'll shoot you back a text as soon as I get it. You'll never get a text from anybody that's not me. Um, it is my personal cell phone number, so I know a lot of people have been asking a lot of questions about that, but it's truly just a, a way for me to be able to connect with you guys and give you guys as much access as you possibly can. One other thing about the text membership before we jump off here is that the text membership comes every single week. We are updating uh, that with new new videos and new schemes and new strategies for you to try out. Um, normally those videos are about an hour long that really just kind of dive into deep um, of how you do this or how you do that or how, why would you run this or how this system really works. So uh, we've covered the big nickel, we've covered the 335 wide, we're covering the 335 normal um, soon. Uh, we're covering the nickel, we're working on some stuff out of nickel normal as well. So a lot of good stuff coming for you guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get in that text membership, that's how you do it. And again, if you want to get the defensive guide, it is just 15 bucks. Help support the channel a ton. And I think it will actually really, really help your defense improve. Thanks for your time. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your night.